Excuse me, what fraud? I don't. I, this is not about Trump anymore. When you, you get a developer, when you get a developer that builds a building, and he says it's worth four hundred million dollars, and he wants to borrow two hundred million from a bank, which happens every day, everywhere on Earth, including every American city. Every developer is an entrepreneur. They shine the light on their building and they say it's worth 400. The bank does its own due diligence, as was done in this case, because they're very good at it. The banks are very good. And they say, no, it's worth 300. We're only going to loan you 150 million. That haggling has gone on for decades. That's how it works. And then in this case, even the bank that was supposedly defrauded testified and said, we didn't lose anything. We want to do business with this guy again. We'd like to, but the judge said, no, 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 no. Let's penalize this developer for $355 million. And if we're going to do that, let's penalize all the developers all across America. They've all done the same thing. All of them should go to jail and we should stop building buildings. That's what the message is from New York. Even the governor herself is concerned about what this looks like to investors all around the world. It's not just U.S. domestic. All well, around the world, people are talking about what happened here. You really think people want to invest money in New York after this? How about we go well, somewhere I, I else? Think, how, I think there are to, people who would, I don't want to cut you off, but I, I want to converse well, with you, you instead. you just did. I, it's, it's only because I want you're, to have a conversation, a, you know what? Kevin, I as opposed you, to just you, having you tell you me. I respect you because you're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. You understand well, exactly what I'm talking about. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm respectable for a number of reasons, Kevin. Trump supporters are pushing back against what they see as an unfair justice system, threatening a boycott that could have a major impact on the country's largest city. Some truck drivers say they're planning on refusing shipments to and from New York City in protest of that $355 million verdict against the former president in his business fraud trial. Dre Clark is live in Manhattan with the latest. Dre, what could this boycott do to prices, not just in New York, but for all of us across the country? Well, certainly if truck drivers were to boycott New York City, the impact has the potential to be very damaging and very quickly. We're talking about supermarkets, big box stores, and other businesses that rely heavily on trucking. They would feel the pinch and so would their customers. About 90% of communities here in New York City rely heavily on trucking to move their goods. This morning, we're on the Jersey side of the George Washington Bridge and every day you can see hundreds, if not thousands of trucks crossing the bridge from Jersey into the city. Meanwhile, one man is now telling truck drivers not to come to New York City after former President Trump was hit with that massive multi-million dollar fine last week. Take a listen. I've been on the radio talking, talking to drivers for about the last hour, hour 15 minutes. And uh, I'm talking to at least 10 drivers going the other way. I'm heading down from South Wisconsin. And uh, they're going to start refusing loads in New York City starting on Monday. Yeah, the man calls himself Chicago Ray, and as of last night, his post on X, formerly Twitter, had garnered more than 6 million views and 60,000 likes. Former President Trump also caught wind of what Chicago Ray is doing and reposted Ray's video on his platform, True Social. But it's hard to ascertain exactly how many drivers are answering his call and what kind of impact it may have. It's not an organized effort, and the drivers expressing support for Chicago Ray, they're scattered all across the country. We did reach out to the Teamsters Union, the union representing many truck drivers, but did not get a response. We also contacted and tried to call at least the National Supermarket Association, which is based here in New York City, but did not get a response. Meanwhile, a Chicago race says he and other truckers are irate over Judge Arthur N. Gorin's uh, finding former President Trump more than $355 million for fraud. Ray, like the former president, believes it's a form of election interference. Meanwhile, while we talked to one driver who says she's joining the movement to boycott New York City. And she says if things go as planned, the city could pay a big price. It could shut New York City down. Um, and, you know, I don't want to hurt the people of New York. That's not what I'm trying to do. But my part in it, if, if New York just loses 10 percent, just 10 percent of the trucks that go in there, their prices are going to skyrocket on everything from milk to eggs to any type of goods that the consumer needs. And when that happens, it's going to cost everybody more money. 
I just received a call from a company that I was getting a load from, and they just said they don't have any loads going to New York. So if you're in New York, you won't be receiving anything from these drivers. I don't know if it's real, but I know that the companies are now saying that they're not delivering loads. It's not just the truckers. It's the companies also. Get yourself prepared, New York. Shit may hit the fan in the next couple of days. New York was already a loser state. Like California is a loser state. There are many loser states because of policy, high taxes, uncompetitive regulation. It was already on the top of the list of being a loser state. I would never invest in New York now. And I'm not the only person saying that. And here's a real time situation. In development in real estate right now, the hottest asset class is very high end data centers. They cost anywhere from two and a half to three and a half billion each. They are very expensive. They require low power. You need permits. But most of the major institutions in the world need more data centers. And that's why developers like me are doing this. Now, you need power. So New York has Niagara Falls. Normally, you'd consider that to put in one of these facilities, create 400 jobs, five more jobs for each of one of those for auxiliary services. I can't go to New York. So I'm going to Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia. Governor Stitt, Kevin Stitt, my staff have met with him. Governor Bergen, the same thing. Governor Justice, those are winner states. They don't do things like this. I have to syndicate that debt and all that equity. We're talking billions of dollars here. Do you think any foreign institution or any private equity firm or any pension fund would touch New York? No, and that's why New Yorkers should be concerned. The fine people of New York should ask themselves, why are we such a loser state? How are we going to attract business? It's not just the existing businesses that are fleeing out to Texas and Florida. What about new money like this that I'm talking about, like a $4 billion data center? Not a chance I would put that in New York. Zero probability. Never. And so they've got a lot of work to do to find themselves getting out of this situation. This has all occurred post-pandemic. Winner states versus loser states. Look at Tennessee right now, fastest growing city in America, Nashville. Winner state, good policy, competitive taxes. You've got to start thinking about this in the context of winners and losers. New York, mega loser state.